Right, now there are many positives to focus on in the Proteus camp. And joining me tonight to discuss this further is cricket commentator Hussein Manak. Hussein, welcome to the program. Thank you, Simon. Pleasure to be here. Right, so what do we make of this uh, Test Series win against New Zealand? Uh, are we on the up? Well, it seems like it. I think, uh, firstly, the Proteus and everybody involved will be pretty, uh, just probably a sigh of relief. Yeah. Uh, because it's been a while since South Africa, number one, have played Test cricket, but also... A while since they've won a test match. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. coming off the, uh, the, the India and the England uh, series, uh, starting early this, this year, were the players, uh, how did they prepare for a test season so early on? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's an odd time of the year, but uh, it looks like with, all, all the, with the calendar being jam-packed with all these tournaments around the world, mm. your IPLs, your big bashes and Caribbean Premier Leagues, I think they found a window uh, to, in, in August in South Africa to, to start playing international cricket. And South Africa, you know, it, it, it was kind of pre-season. We've never played cricket in August before. Yes. So it's an amazing, um, I mean, I was sitting at Centurion there, uh, you know, for the last two or three days of, of the match. And sitting there and just thinking, but the, this weather now in August is absolutely perfect. It's even better than summer because yeah. it's not too hot, it's not too cold. It's just perfect conditions. So uh, I think it worked out beautifully. Also, uh, look at Durban was unfortunate because of the rain and weather we can't really control. But uh, I think South Africa bounced back really beautifully at Centurion, which is a fortress for, for the Proteus. And they've uh, just continued that trend. Absolutely. Uh, now, how is the, the, the side shaping up? Um, we, we're still recovering from losing a lot of great Test uh, players. Absolutely. Do you think we're finding a balance yet? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, when you do lose great players, and, and I, I don't use the word great lightly because mm. you're talking about players like Chuck Callis and, of course, Graham Smith and uh, quite a few others, uh, it's, it's not easy to replace them. I mean, a Jacques Callis, for example, just him alone, you, you're not going to replace him in a hurry because of the fact that, he, he, you know, he, there were two, basically he filled three positions yeah, okay. in one team, um, you know, with his fielding, the batting, bowling. So it's, it's not easy to replace. And even till today, if you look at the balance of the team, you're either going to be a bowler light or better light somewhere along the line because you don't have the Jack Ellis in, in, your, in your lineup. But I think having said all that, there's fantastic talent coming through. If you look at uh, the pipeline, the franchise system, uh, the fact that players can come into the national setup and do well straight away, I think does tell us a bit about the system itself. It's quite a strong system compared to other countries around the world. And uh, a few of the players are starting to perform and do well. I mean, Temba Bavuma comes up, he does well straight away. Yeah. Um, Kakhi Sorabada comes up, he does. Dean Elga comes in, you know, he is doing well. Fab Duplessis, he'll be very relieved that he's got 100 uh, and he worked very hard for it and it was a wonderful innings. So I think a lot of them are coming around. But where South Africa, I think, um, will be really pleased is to have Philander and Stain back. You know, yeah. those two for me uh, are why South Africa have won test matches in the last four to five years. They've taken between the two of them more than 50% of test wickets. And that's the reason. So you can see immediately the two of them come back and immediately there's a big change. It was quite worrying at a time because um, we, we were worried if we were ever going to see Philander back and was Stain going to be um, you know, able to, to play test cricket again. Uh, th that pace attack with Rabada included, um, it can go on and, and have a, a pretty decent summer, can't it? Well, you know, I say to somebody that if you look at that three-pong pace attack with Stain, Philander and Rabada, I mean, that's probably the most potent mm. pace attack or combination in world cricket. It's very difficult to find three other bowlers in combination who are going to be at you all the time bowling the type of deliveries that the three of them bowl. Absolutely. I mean, they're at you, they bowl wicket-taking deliveries, they're asking questions all the time. It's not easy as a batsman. So I really do feel for the New Zealand batsmen and the pitch and the conditions were not easy at all. Uh, but they are phenomenal. And then, you know, you, you add a Mone Morkel into that mix who wasn't playing or not available, and suddenly you've just got an amazing attack. So let's hope they stay fit from a South African point Absolutely. of view for the next few years so South Africa can, can uh, regain that number one spot. Because Australia's on the horizon, and obviously South Africa always have something to prove against Australia. It's going to be quite a, 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 a tasty uh, test series against them, won't it? It will. I mean, you know, South Africa, Australia is always uh, something to look forward to. And of course, uh, South Africa and Australia have a very similar style of cricket. The conditions are very similar to ours back home. Mm. And so it's something that I know as South Africans, we always look forward to 
going to Australia and playing in, that condi in those conditions. But uh, don't forget, there's one night, uh, uh, day-night test match, which is going to be taking place as well. Absolutely. So, so that's with the ping ball, and that's going to be, you know, different conditions altogether. And South Africa have never played a, test, a ping ball test match before. So that's going to be interesting. And I think for us also in South Africa to watch, it's going to be uh, quite a spectacle. Right, well, that's what there is to look forward to. Those are the positives. However, what about our top order? What about finding a position for Quinton de Kock? There's still serious question marks. What about uh, the spinner? Where do we uh, go with all of this? There's still a work in progress. Is Australia not coming too early for us? Look, I, I think South Africa, it's about the batsmen getting runs. And, and mm. you know, you talk about the batting order. So it's about players finding themselves in the batting order, especially since you've lost Callis, you've lost Smith, you've lost Alviro Peterson. There's a, quite a few big players who've been out of the order. So now it's about just slotting the younger players and coming in. So Dean Elgar's come in, he's taken the opening spot. But Quinton de Kock now, who's filled in, suddenly has done really well and has been quite positive. So, yes, a lot of, yeah. you, you know, you'll read now a lot of people talking about what about he, he be opens and what have you. Uh, the Quinton de Kock himself has made it quite clear that that was a once-off situation. But he volunteered to bat and open the batting, which he's done all his life. But as a wicket keeper, uh, to keep wicket and to open the batting yeah. is going to be very difficult. So I think somewhere along the line, that conversation will have to happen. Where it ends up, I don't know. And I suppose it depends on all the, all the role players involved. And also, uh, A.B. de Villiers coming back. I mean, we have to remember, we, we won a test without our, our test captain. What kind of an impact does he make uh, for the team? I mean, he always makes a massive difference. You know, he, he's one of the most phenomenal batsmen in world cricket exciting, entertaining, and everything else that goes with it is uh, single-handedly can take a test match away from you or any match, you know, mm -hmm. because he scores at that particular rate that he does. So he's a dangerous player. And I think as a, as a leader and as a captain to come back, um, and, and as you say, to win a, te a test series, it, it turned out to be a one-off, didn't it? But I mean, still to win it without your captain and your, one, of, one of your key players, uh, I think was a good achievement. So to have him back will strengthen that, that lineup. Somebody, of course, will have to miss out, and I think that's not a bad challenge to have. Yeah. Sometimes you'd rather have people fighting for places who are all performing than, you know, you're struggling to uh, scrape in the barrel and you're not sure who to select. So I think we've, we've got a healthy problem at the moment. Right. Well, it's exciting times ahead. Hussein, thank you so much for joining us and uh, talking us through uh, this latest Proteus uh, Test Series. My pleasure, victory. Simon. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, that's where we're going to have to leave it for tonight. Uh, remember, you can stay in touch with us via Twitter at SABC Sports Live is our handle.